Hello everyone, my name is Christopher Schweda and today I will be talking to you guys about homelessness. So uh, what is homelessness? Uh, homelessness is a rampant problem in our country that affects one's ability to find suitable long-term housing for either themselves or their families. Uh, some things about homelessness. Roughly 552,000 people were counted as homeless in 2018. Um, the leading cause of homelessness is a lack of affordable housing and what this means basically is that it's not necessarily like we don't have enough houses in the world to get everybody a house it's more we don't have enough housing in like bigger cities that uh that is like at an income price where people can afford to stay at them for long periods of time and then they find themselves in uh, like shelters or out on the streets. Um, and two of the biggest uh, problem cities are New York, which had the highest count of people without homes, coming in at about 79,000 in 2018. Uh, and Los Angeles is another one, and they came in second at a whopping 49,995, so about 50,000 homeless people in 2018 alone. So you, com you combine those together, and you're at about 130,000 just in those two cities alone. Uh, just a little bit of, like, why it interests me. So my family has never been afraid to talk about social problems, like like a lot of families do like when you're at a like a family gathering or like um a holiday uh and they've never been like afraid to talk about them in the context of like their political beliefs and all that um that being said of all the problems that my family's talked about the homelessness situation in our country has always been one that's been kind of like danced around or like people beat around the bush when talking about it or like every time it's brought up it's kind of been pushed off because people don't really have, like, they've not really thought too much about it, and so they don't have an opinion on the matter. Uh, and that reason alone is one of the biggest parts of why I chose this topic, because I, I want to be able to educate not only my peers, but I also want to take the, I want to educate myself, and, like, in this research, that's what I'm doing, and I want to be able to take that information, and then, you know, the next time I'm at, like, a family gathering, and if something comes up about it, I can inform other people about it. So I've chosen two individuals today, as well as an organization, an organization that I think take the issue of homelessness pretty seriously. Uh, f the first one I'm going to talk about is a man named Jeff, K Jeff Kaczynski, uh, who in 2016 was appointed director of the Department of Homelessness and Supportive Housing in San Francisco, California. Uh, the other person I'm going to be taking a look at is a former congresswoman by the name of Marcia Fudge, who was earlier this year, actually, 2021, uh, appointed the 18th Secretary of, Ho of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD for short. And finally, the organization that I want to talk about is the National Coalition for the Homeless, or NH NCH for short. Um, the reason I chose the National Coalition for the Homeless actually is because there's a lot of um, there are a lot of organizations that uh, combat homelessness, but the NCH is one of the biggest and it's been around the longest. And because of that, I think it's good to talk about in uh, respect to what everybody else is doing. Uh, so a little thing, a little bit about Jeff Kaczynski. Uh, five days after being appointed director, uh, Jeff Kaczynski was invited to a panel that was used as a medium to discuss the problem of homelessness in the city and what ways they might use to help, like what ways they might use to help this problem. Uh, and this prompted Kaczynski to talk directly to the media and through them, the media reporters, on how news coverage kind of falls short when talking about the homeless situation. And he, they, like the panel themselves, actually mentioned eight different ways they can help fix it. So, the first uh, thing they mentioned was avoid stereotyping homeless people. And basically what this means, well, this first notion, it was discussed within the panel that news coverage often ostracizes and like makes, it exoticizes the homeless as if they were something to display rather than trying to help and discuss how to fix these issue, issues or contextualize the problem. And basically what that means is that we look at, the news looks at homeless 
as like, oh, this is a money shot. This is a money story. This, we need to report on this because we need news rather than this is a problem that affects a lot more people than we think it does. And so they need to talk more about that rather than, like I said, ostracizing and exoticizing homeless people. The second point they made was that we need to shed, shed light on those who are invisible. So some people, some homeless people are invisible to the government because some don't report like they're homeless um, in fear of losing like their families or being looked at as if they're unfit to parent. Um, it's discussed in the panel that sure housing is something needed, but services and care matter just as much, if not more. And so on this point, they're kind of discussing how a lot of homeless families, the mothers won't report it because what homelessness is looked at is rather than being the problem of I can't support my kids because of some sort of issue, they look at it as you're unfit to be a parent because you can't afford a home or something along those lines. Um, so the third point they make is uh, we need to explain why racial disparity exists. As it stands, there is racial discrimination in a ton of matters surrounding the workplace, uh, as well as like banking policies and more. And it's and the panel talks about this, and it kind of explains why this is a bad why this is a bad thing and what we can do to fix it. Uh, the fourth point they like to make, they want to make, is uh, we need to learn some history of U.S. welfare programs, because often historical content is looked over by news outlets because it's ultimately a business and they need to put out news stories. Like I was saying earlier in like the first or second point, and like that being said, we see a lot of new problems in the homelessness community rather than looking at the root cause of it. So we see like, oh, in New York they might make uh they might make like a news story covering on how there's not enough housing or now there's not enough uh food in a shelter or something like that where rather than seeing like this is homelessness this is a problem we're just seeing like problems that come off of this main branch which is homelessness the fifth point they want to make is that we need to keep in mind um, some of the cities like criminalization of homelessness so like though they might be a bit older there are a lot of laws in San Francisco's history that criminalize homelessness or like things that homeless do and some examples are like the 1981 ban on sleeping in parks or the sit lie law that showed up in 2010 these cause uh, these problem these uh, like policies they cause citations and unpaid citations in these bigger cities lead to jail time and consequently a criminal record. And because of that, it makes it harder to get a house, like a loan for a house, and even a job is farther out of reach. Um, the next two kind of go a little hand in hand. Uh, the sixth point they make is that we need to recognize that stable housing is crucial to mental health. Uh, let me go down there. Ooh. Oh, wrong thing. So hold on, let me go back. All right, so the sixth point we want to make is that we need to recognize that simple housing is health. Like a warm meal and a roof over our heads is essential, and going without that for a long period of time is likely to cause a lot of mental strain on a person, and this can cause a wide variety of conditions that need support. Like we don't often think about it, but how we're so often to being comfortable in our own homes we'll eat meals with our families and we cook we bake and it's warm and without that really could we even imagine like for people like myself could i even imagine going a week without that like even those basic necessities uh, and the seventh point they make kind of goes hand in hand. Then we need to rec like that we need to recognize stable housing is crucial to primary care. So chronic diseases and medical care are hard to come by themselves, but for homeless people, it's a nightmare dealing with certain situations. It's too harsh a climate to be living out on the streets when one needs a bed or a hospital. And it, an easy way to think about that is. When you have a cold, it's not really that big of a problem. You go, you take some Advil, you go lay in bed, and, you know, you you go to sleep, and when by the time you wake up, usually that cold is gone or better. 
And, you know, thinking about it, you have a warm bed to sleep in, you have medication to take. If you're living out on the streets, this is these two things are luxuries that you can't afford to have. So how bad is that cold going to get just from not having things like a warm bed to sleep in and basic medication like Advil to take? And finally, the eight, eighth point they make uh, is to focus on solutions, not just problems. New ar news articles come and go, but we need to focus on solutions and the positive things we can do to help rather than say the news doesn't cover enough or cover it correctly. We need to look at what is available right now and what we can do to further increase the efforts to combat homelessness. So this kind of encompasses a lot of what we were talking about for the th through the first seven points in that news is the beginning we need to make sure that we understand like news is telling us about the problems and we need to understand that but we need to keep going with that so we need to we as the public need to take in what the news is telling us and run with it so the next person i want to talk about is marcia now marcia fudge has having been recently appointed secretary of the housing the uh housing department has shown many that she is capable and willing to work on the problem of homelessness she realizes that with so many homeless it's hard for americans to be told stay safe at home when covid struck when a lot of people being told that don't have a uh, home to go to so like when president trump was making um announcements like we need to stay safe during covid six feet you know some people don't have the luxury of doing that and finally, the organization I want to talk about is the NCH. And the NCH has done much for homelessness and fundraisers and other types of support campaigns. That being said, they've made some statements about the problems and ways to fix it. The NCH has gone on record to state that housing is the most fundamental way to eradicating homelessness, but that afford affordable housing can't be built fast enough to help end homelessness in a summer in a number of cities like Los Angeles and New York due to political issues like political foot dragging and the process of raising money from different sources because that takes a lot of time. They've also talked about permanent supportive housing, which would not only solve the housing issue, but also help with caring for people who needed it. Again, however, this is something that money becomes an issue with. And I think they talk, them talking about permanent supportive housing is a good thing because Basically, what permanent supportive housing is, is it's low-income housing that people can live in, but it also has facilities like its own, um, like, small clinics and things like that, where people who are less fortunate than others that have finally got, like, homeless people who have finally gotten into low-income housing have necessities that might not, that might still be out of their reach there for them 24-7. So homelessness has always been a problem that society has had to deal with. Um, the fight to save it off, however, has not always been a big topic of, of discussion amongst people. That being said, polls done in 2011, 2013, and 2016 have suggested that our society's concern for the topic of homelessness is on the rise like never before, which is actually a great thing to hear. When... Um, I went to a website called the Opportunity Agenda, and when they took a certain, when they asked survey respondents how often they think about it, 47% answered that they think about homelessness and poverty very often, while 17% of respondents said they think about it very little to never. With this information in mind, a poll was conducted in 2015 as well to see what the people of the United States thought about homelessness and a whopping 89% of it said that it was a very serious issue. And on that matter, after that, 63% of those respondents agreed that the government spends too little on funding on uh, funding on helping to make affordable housing for the homeless and like to help combat homelessness. So, just some pub I decided to take some public reaction to the claims makers as well because I thought that this was uh, another thing that we should look at. Um, since being appointed director, Kaczynski has been met with a large amount of positivity for the work that he's done and like the programs that he's put into place for the public. That being said, due to the, the Department of Homelessness and Supportive Housing's lukewarm reactions and public reviews when problems arise, 
um, Kaczynski has actually stepped down from his position as the director and moved laterally over to lead the department um, back to the basics and kind of reinstitute it to help it out because this action, um, basically, the public was saying how whenever a problem arose that they kind of, uh, they didn't respond to the problem fast enough, so it became an even bigger issue. Um, but the action of Kaczynski uh, stepping down actually received a lot of positive feedback from from those people, like that public that were originally concerned with the speed and ability of the department when issues arose. Uh, Anna Marcia Fudge, uh, she's done a lot, and especially as a com um, as a congresswoman, to combat homelessness. And that being said, her appointment as the 18th secretary of the Department of Housing and Urban Development earlier this year. Um, it was actually met with a very, a very stellar public response. And even um, the organization I'm talking about, uh, the NCH, they even applauded the decision knowing that having her in charge of the department would lead to a very big change in the fight to stave off homelessness. And then finally, just some public reaction to um, the NCH. Uh, as I was saying before, it's a really big organization that has devoted its cause to fighting homelessness and because of that it's been around forever so there's a lot on it um and so the national coalition for the homeless has been around for a very long time and it's had its hands in uh, many projects to help the homeless it's been one of the highest rated charities for so long because of its hard-working volunteers and workers and it's one of the biggest charities to combat homelessness and because of this it has a lot of eyes watching to see what it does and that being said a lot of people are more than happy to help because the charity has proven itself to be effective countless times through fundraisers and other events that they've held all right, so there are two policies that I'd like to cover. Um, the first is Marcia Fudge. Uh, she actually pushed through a policy, or more of like a, a lofty goal of getting 130,000 homeless people off the streets using the coronavirus relief package that um, President Biden is sending out that includes over $50 billion. And the second one that I want to talk about is the Affordable Care Act, or I use ACA for short. That has already been passed. It's already a, it's a policy that's already been passed, but it's con it's constantly being fought over in congressional meetings to decide if it should be struck down or kept alive due to the increasing costs of health care, which is what it's all about. So. With Marcia's, uh, with Marcia Fudge's goals in mind, using the resources that pri President Biden's relief package gives, she plans on bolstering a lot of different, um, a lot of different efforts that are going on right now. So, um, as examples, uh, she plans on bolstering the emergency rental assistance with 21.55 billion dollars. She wants to put five billion towards the emergency housing of people who have been affected by the coronavirus. Um, another $5 billion is going towards helping homelessness directly, and the last bit is an $850 million chunk going towards tribal and more rural housing. Um, I thought this was a great thing to hear because it's a lot of money going towards different associations, um, communities, and policies that are already in place in order to help the homelessness get off the street, as well as bolster measures already in place to kind of stop the further spread of homelessness. Like, she's kind of corralling it so that way we can attack the problem head on. Uh, and secondly, with the Affordable Care Act in place, the one I wanted to talk about, uh, with the Affordable Care Act in place, healthcare and a lot of other health costs are opened up to a lot of people. Uh, one of those populations is the homeless. So with the ACA active, naturally healthcare costs go up in turn, and in turn taxes and prices go up. Um, but that being said, the Affordable Care Act is constantly being fought over in Congress to be kept going because without this act in place, a lot of people who are homeless would lose their eligibility for health care and other needs. And we don't want that. So in conclusion... Just a couple of things. Um, the United St States has seen the homelessness is a problem that needs to be solved. However, we are still kind of in like the baby step stage of trying to fix the issue, I think. Uh, I think some further actions to take that would benefit us is trying to make, uh, would be to like try and make a united front between a lot of the organizations that work on the issue to stand against uh, homelessness instead of standing alone. So 
uh, just talking about it like from before, like I said, the NCH is a very big organization that's been around for a very long time, but it's not the only one out there that's working to combat homelessness. There are a lot of other um, organizations that are doing that. I think the problem is that we're all kind of focused on doing our own thing to fight it, that we're not really focusing on the main issue of it. And I think that if a lot of these organizations came together and said, okay, what, how can we, how can we all pull our efforts together to benefit this? Like, I think that would be a great thing to do. Um, another action to take uh, would be to look at homelessness as an issue that affects people rather than the individuals the problem plagues. Uh, I definitely think there are some things that I need to, that we need to work on, however, to help fight the issue. So like claims, so like things to work on, uh, first of all, claims makers, because claims makers have a huge stake in this when it comes to the public and how we can help. Some of us don't know how to help the cause. And one thing that claims makers can do is to give us directions. They need to tell people how they can help by doing X, Y, and Z. Like if we start communicating more clearly, we can start working more efficiently. And what I mean by that is that a lot of people might know about homelessness, but they might not know how they can help. So rather than just saying the government needs to create more funding and do all this, I think that we also need to take, take a step back and think about how can we help, like how can the public, your everyday average Joe, how can we help make life better for the homeless and how can we get homeless off the street and try and end homelessness? I don't think it has to be big. I don't think it always has to be some grand thing that everybody has to take a million years to complete. I think that having a small goal that every man, woman, and child can take two or three minutes out of their day to do is something that we can easily work towards and use to help end homelessness. And I think another issue that we see often is the lack of news stories and coverage the uh, coverage of the homeless of the issue of homelessness that it gets. Um, and I kind of we I kind of discussed this in, when I was talking about Jeff Kosinski and the panel he was on. But uh, I think that the with uh, with the news addressing homelessness, I think that not only do we have to address homelessness in a way that you know it, it doesn't just exoticize the homeless i think we also need to hear more about it i don't see on the news very often um like homelessness this or homelessness that i think every time we, we don't hear about it often so when we do hear about it and it's not about the actual issue itself it's just like a branching problem in the issue that's what sticks with us and we never really like see just how what we can do to help um i think that at the end of the day though what most people know about the issue is what they see on the news and if news isn't covering the issue we just aren't learning all in all uh homelessness like many other social issues is a multifaceted gem and because of that there are many different ways in which to view the problem of homelessness. Our job as the metaphorical jeweler is to find out the best way to tackle the problem and put that on display so that others can see it and want to take up the fight and cause and start to fight against homelessness as well. Uh, that's everything. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate your feedback and we'll talk to you soon.